Demon basketball coach Mike McConaughey, whose team is playing its best basketball of the season in many respects, having won two of the last three, just an overtime away from a three-game win streak right now. And you're about to play two very important games as the conference race begins to really thicken up uh, Wednesday night at Lamar and uh, then Saturday afternoon at Prather Coliseum against Stephen F. Austin. Coach, your team has shot very well, uh, 13, 14 points better than it has all year long in these last three games. What's the key to that over 50% shooting success? Well, I think a lot of it has to do in two of the three ball games we got out and got transition buckets. And I just think we've had a lot better ball movement. The term we use is a ball doesn't stick. It's not being dribbled, it's being passed and movement to where we catch and shoot. And that's been a really positive thing. I think that had a lot to do with it. Also has something to do with Ishmael Lane. I mean, because the, his, his numbers, nine for nine, one game, seven for nine, I think another game, you know, really has done a really nice job. Not getting as many attempts as you would like, but, but he's been very productive in the attempts that he's had. Your team defensively is also playing better, I think. And uh, are there any things that you guys have done to ramp up that uh, performance? You know, I think that one thing that's been a little bit different about this group is that they really locked into the game plans. And, um, you know, people would say, well, they ought to do that often, all the time. Yeah. But I think it's been their approach because for, instead of getting bitter, they're trying to get better when we correct them. And that's a credit to them, but I think it's also a credit to Coach Jeff Moore and Coach Bill Lewitt and Coach Jacob Spielbauer and the fact of what they're presenting them. They're presenting it in a manner in which those players are able to actually absorb it. And that's been a really positive thing, a uh, really positive thing. Eight of the 11 conference games have come down to the last minute. Uh, there's no game that's stress-free, but you guys are accustomed to the stress and that's got to be beneficial. Well, I think it has really been beneficial to us. I mean, I felt like in the in the uh, Central Arkansas game, you know, it was important that we'd been there. I felt like in the New Orleans game, it was important. We, we had two big buckets by Ishmael Lane in the last um, minute, minute of that game uh, to tie the game. I wish he'd stepped sideways instead of forward on that last shot that he made. Uh, it very well could have been a three. But I think that that made a lot of difference. And the other day, uh, being able to come back, they tied us in both those games, um, uh, the UCA game and the McNeese game. We had leads, and we've not been able to push it over the top, but we didn't break. We bent, but we didn't break, and we were able to get it. Malik McTwire makes a huge bucket against UCA. Ish makes a pass to him in the offside corner. And when they double teamed him, he took the ball to the bucket and finished strong. And I thought that that was uh, growth. Uh, you know, Malik Matoire had one of the best games of his year, the year um, and career possibly at McNeese the other night. Uh, I think he had six rebounds and ten points and, and he had a big bucket. He's had big free throws down the stretch at UCA, UNO and against McNeese he had big free throws as well. Your team plays a Lamar ball club in Beaumont Wednesday night that certainly, like your team, is playing its best basketball. Yeah, season. they're really playing extremely well. They're extremely disciplined, they're extremely tough-minded. Uh, Nick Garth is a remarkable shooter, um, just does a great job, can really fill it up. They've got so many really good parts. I can't pronounce uh, their big guy's name, and I don't want to butcher it up, but he's just, uh, just a, a phenomenal player inside, and they've got other pieces. I believe it's Hudson's their point guard, does a really good, good job, is a strong guy, had three threes in the last outing. Uh, so he's just really talented, talented. Coach Price does a magnificent job. Uh, they're just always a tough-minded team and, and do a really good job. So it's, it'll be a real challenge for us. We'll go over uh, there on Wednesday and play. And, uh, you know, um, the road's been a good thing for us. You know, I mean, it's hard to understand how we've won three conference games on the road and we've lost the number that we've lost here at Prather, which has always been a good place for us. But I don't know what it is. We've tried to replicate our focus on the road for home, trying to see what it is. Uh, Saturday games, we've played a lot better in Saturday games than we have Wednesday games. Don't really know what the, the makeup there is, the distractions of school, of what it is, but it's been a, that's been kind of a letdown for us and we've got to try to figure that out down the stretch. You lost Brian White again with an injury. Uh, C.J. Jones seems like in the last two games 
has been really solid for you at the point. Yeah, he's done a really nice job. But, you know, there again, you go back to it, when a point guard's having to play 30 minutes a game in our system, it's really, really difficult. Uh, I thought he had, he had seven assists the other night, did a good job. John Norvell came in and, and did, some, uh, did some good things, but CJ uh, carried the, most of the weight as far as the length of the game. And John had been shifted back to the two again when Brian came back, and now he's just trying to get back in the, in the, in the groove of playing the point again, and I know he will because he's such a, a hard-working young man and really does had, had a great defensive play at the end of the game at McNeese where he contested the shot really, really hard without fouling. Uh, but CJ's play has been really, really good. Ishmael Lane, nation's best in terms of concur current streaks of double-doubles. What can be said about the way he's playing? Well, I think it's the now factor. And I used that yesterday in something I talked to the church. We took our t church team to church, Malik to the church invited him, and I talked about now. And it's now. And you know, you don't have tomorrow. You, you got to do it now. Because if you continue to wait, you're going to wait and your season's going to be over, and you're not going to be able to get back what you've lost. You know, and, and that, that's something that, you know, we've really tried to emphasize with all our players. Now we have to play. We can't wait till we get to this game or wait till we get to that game. What causes that? A lot of times I think our guarantee game schedule causes that because it's kind of you're going up against these unbelievable opponents. I mean, Houston, for instance. You're playing Houston. I mean, they're 23-1, and one, you know, the best, most wins in the country and you're playing them, and then, you know, well, when we get to play our teams in our league, we're going to be okay. Well, then you don't get off to a great start, and you keep pushing everything back, and we just said it's now. It's now or never. We've got to, we've got to step up and do it, and I think that the guys have really responded to that. I think that Malik and DeAndre, I thought DeAndre had a great game, a great bounce back game against uh, McNeese, uh, had 22 first-half points, remarkable. Um, Malik had a great game, Ish had a great game, so they need to lead so that our younger guys will understand it needs to be now too. And uh, some of that's the residual effect from a difficult year the year before when we lost so many kids and had so many freshmen um, that just, you know, and, and the four that stayed have done a lot better job. Conference race extremely jumbled mm -hmm. except at the top talk about yeah it. we just need those top guys to take care of their business because then the and us take care of our business and then we can get ourselves in it could be a remarkable place that we could be in if we just take care of our business you know we're not that far off from from being in the middle of the pack you know more say i'm saying four five and six you know you could be four five and six you know, you're not that far, but you got to win your games along the way, and you can't, you can't depend on anybody else. It's just on you. What are you going to do? And uh, so hopefully that we'll understand that and, and get the job done. But the one thing is that's encouraging, we are getting better, and we're getting better in a lot of areas. And the, the factor that can't be overlooked is how hard this team plays. Uh, I mean, you know, the New Orleans game, they, we had three guys, uh, John Norvell, Brandon Hutton and Jimmy, Jimmy Odd, who put on a performance as far as intensity and effort that was beyond anything I've seen. I mean, to the point when they came off the floor, they were completely gassed. Well, really and truly, wouldn't it be great if everybody played that hard all the time? If you could do that, you could beat anybody on any given night. I don't care who the opponent was. You could be in the game with a position if you just played that hard. And those three guys did a remarkable job. Saturday at points, all three of them did a nice job, but we didn't have collectively them there. I felt like the Wednesday game did have a residual effect on the Saturday game. I felt like both teams, McNeese and us, both were a little lethargic in the beginning. That's why it was 41 to 40 at halftime. And both teams scored and both teams settled down and got after it. I felt like our depth was Definitely in our favor on Saturday. I wish that we could dial Ish back to 28 minutes a game. Uh, I think the 30, you know, 33 to 37 is hard for him to make the push, but he's doing a great job. I mean, to think that, you know, I've, I've been here for 20 years now, and we've had some great players, but what's impressed me about Ish is, is that he finally under, has understood that you can't take plays off. Doesn't mean that he doesn't ever now and then take one off, but he understands that now 
And that's why he's in the game, because I can remember years and years I've had guys, Coach, you got to give me more time. you got to give me more time. Well, Ish is getting more time because he's playing as hard as he possibly can the whole time he's out there. He's not taking plays off. Hard to take him out of the game. You know, a player might say, well, Coach, you're giving him more rope. Guy that's getting double-figure rebounds and double-figure points and almost double-figure blocks is going to tend to get it. So you go do that, and you'll get the same minutes as Ish is getting. But don't talk to me about that you know, otherwise. And, and nobody really says that. That's just kind of a general thing. And I can go back and I think about some of the really good players way back, like Michael Byers Dawson used to always say to me, and he was so talented, Coach, you got to give me more time. you got to give me more. And I'd say, Mike, hey, you hold it in your hand. You hold it in your hand. There might have been some other guys along the way. You know, the, the, the group we ran with the, the um, Demons of Destiny, they got it. They got it that they could only play X number of minutes, you know, and be productive. And I mean, you had double figure scores nearly at every spot when you combined them. It was, it was a remarkable thing. It was a joy to watch. And, you know, but we've never been that deep. We've got depth, but we're not to that point to where you've got the same kind of depth where, you know, Keenan Jones, Tyrone Mitchell was a really good point guard. Keenan Jones was a really, really good point guard. When you, t when you substituted those guys, for, it was like, because Keenan and Tyrone's games were completely different. I mean, Keenan was six foot three and was long and athletic. Tyrone was the head of your defense. He did some things. That's where I wish that we could get at this group to be. And if you could get them to just play hard and, and accept where they are, there's no telling what could happen. All right, complete change of subject. Thursday's Valentine's Day. You've got a 40 year marriage. Yeah. What's your advice to us guys on Valentine's Day? Keep it simple. <laughs> you know, boy, that's a pretty tough one, Doug. You know, I mean, I think, you know, it's got to be more than about one day. I think, you know, and, you know, that's not coming from a romantic by any, any, any means, stretch of the imagination, but you might try to do, do a few things along the way instead of just on Valentine's Day, and that might bode well. All right, anything out of the realm of chocolates and flowers or? I wouldn't do chocolates, I'd yeah. do flowers. Yeah. I'd do flowers or something that, 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 you know, you could see for a little bit longer. I mean, you know, I mean, uh, you know, really and truly most women, the chocolates, are the chocolates for the wife or the girlfriend or are they for you? You know, the flowers definitely aren't for you unless you're, you really are a horticulturist and you just love, you know, beautiful flowers, which I think they're great and my wife, puts little flower things together and I mean she does a great job with them and I enjoy them but it's not something that I would go out and do but you know I just think that flowers would definitely be my choice. So on the other side of the coin what's the best Valentine's gift for Mike McConaughey? Uh, you know I it's like anything else you know it doesn't really nothing I'm not really about gifts you know so you know I guess every day every day love every day support you know, is, is what it's about, knowing that they're there for you all the time. And showing you where a really good sale is. A you, sale? You do I like do that. like sales, you yeah, they're, like they're sales. Good. especially those 75% off sales. I really like 75% off. Back years ago, when we used to do a, an event here, you know, all year I was looking for 75% sales. Don't look for those as much anymore, but, you know, just grateful for uh, the support that Connie gives me and our program. and. Thankful for her and, you know, and wish her a happy Valentine's Day.